there he is the crew is all here what is up bannock folks welcome back to the old show here we are sitting down with don don what is your last name so i don't uh skewer it a tour john tour john john tour john don tour i'm a professional speaker it's what i do don tour of dead days um they are a london-based metalcore band something in the water you know what we do uh we we have to do that thing every time we hear the name because that's the the really the lifeblood of this channel but yeah our first exposure to your band was when we uh did our reaction to the song dead days or to the song wow Give me a minute. Phil usually intros. Phil death anyways. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. Um, <laughs> when we did our reaction to the song Rot, I say you just sort of take us back in time and uh, yeah, talk about how the band formed and yeah, let's start from the beginning. Sounds good. Um, well, I used to be in a band, kind of all started with a band called Searching for Satellites. I don't know if you guys ever heard of them back in the day. Yeah, names um, sound familiar to me. From London, yeah, we, we were like one of the the bigger like local bands, and um, so we did that for a long time. Met a ton of people, and then around 2011, I want to say, uh, I got like headhunted by a band called Horizons out of like Mississauga. I remember that band. I remember that yeah, band well. So I would join them, and uh, we did a couple years of touring with them. We did some big tours, like they were on the up and up when I joined. Mm -hmm. and uh so we did a couple of big tours with like um uh i think the biggest one we did was like plot and you ice nine kills uh like moss to flames and then us and another opener and uh met a bunch of i mean all those were all bands i listened to at the time which was kind of like that's kind of how they <laughs> they got me to join was like hey our vocalist quit and um you know if you have a passport like you can hop on this show, like this tour, but it's in ten days. And you're like, oh, cool, right? <laughs> Let's do it. So I just went and did it. Um, it was like you know, time of my life. It was great. But um, from that, how it kind of reaches around to uh, to dead days is after the band kind of dissolved. I quit music for about five years. Like just kind of wanted to be a big boy and get a job and actually have money for once after all the years of playing music. Because <laughs> we know you make lots of money doing that. Um, but after that, it was. You know, I found all my buddies from like all the bands I'd kind of been in. Um, our old guitar player, Ty, him and I had been making music after a while of being like, hey, we've got kids, we've got lives, like, let's try it again. Like, we're kind of bored. You know, music is one of those things that we have to do. And um, we started Dead Days. So uh, we kind of, kind of recruited like our guitar player, Jeff, um, our bass player, Wayne, who I've known for years and years, and then Adam Linka, which I think you guys know from the Northern, mm -hmm. um, picked him up as a drummer because he was actually the drummer in Horizons when I uh, when we ended up uh, calling it quits. So um, kind of just took it from there. And then 2019, we went and recorded uh, with Lee Albrecht up in uh, Michigan, and that was awesome because he's on all sorts of big name bands now uh, with writing. And uh, pandemic hit after that, so right. <laughs> kind of, we put that first song out. I think it was like that same month was like everything was like shut right down. And that way we were like, okay, cool. What do we do from here? So um, I know it's a long-winded story, but um, we so when I toured with that uh, like the Plot and You tour, we did. Uh, I got to meet JD from Horizons or from Horizons from Ice Nine Kills, and. Uh, I got chatting with him a lot. So I kind of made friends with all those guys back in the day. And then I reached out in like 2020 and was like, Hey man, I don't know if you remember me, but like you're recording bands now. You're not touring anymore. Like, you know, do you want to maybe work together? And he was like, yeah, you remembered me. It was great. And then now it's just been like a long friendship from there. We've just done all everything from, uh, we had the control EP. We did one song with him called control and then the rest like tyrants and then all the new singles have been with JD. So that's kind of where we're at now. And uh, that was the longest answer you've ever had in your life. No, we need it. We need it. That's what we're here for. Like a long whirlwind of like people I've known, bringing them back around after taking a huge break and just seeing if people remember me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, you were, you were doing a lot of touring with 
Horizons before, and then it, like you slowly started up with Dead Days again. Is that something you want to do with Dead Days again? Like, do you want to be doing these extensive long tours? Because I know some bands, you know, who have done it for so many years, kind of take a step back and go like, all right, let's kind of make this more calculated. Like, let's make these show count a little bit more. Um, so like, I don't know if it's just like, you know, pedals to the metal. Let's play as many shows as possible. Or it's like, all right, like, what can we do to like, you know, probably get the most out of most of these shows? I just wasn't sure if necessarily one or the other was an option. I mean, if you look at the difference between like uh, buddies like our bands and Sone, like anybody who's kind of typically when you start a new band or you're young, I mean, we're all old too. Like most of us are 35 plus. So um, we've all done it. Like I've been in bands since I was like 15. So that's 20 years of playing every show you can get and just being fine doing whatever. Um, but no, you're right. We're definitely doing a more calculated route this time. Um, back when we started, like like MySpace days, right? So that was just playing shows is the only way people would find you. Mm -hmm. That worked for like bands like Searching for Satellites. And then with Horizons, it was YouTube. You know, music videos really popped off. And uh, that's how you got discovered. And then now it's obviously all social media. So... Trying to learn that is a lot, um, especially from a guy. I just don't really use a lot of that stuff. So it's been a learning curve, but it's fun, like making videos. And and uh, I mean, making music videos is easier than ever now if you have the right people. Um, so we've been doing that. But with shows, definitely we've we get lots of show offers. We actually get a lot of offers for the U.S. We're kind of uh, it's weird for us. We we're not as big in the local scene. Like hardcore seems to be like the top notch thing around here which is awesome. Um, but like metalcore kind of falls to the wayside. So we kind of have to pick where we play and what we play. Like we're trying to break into the U S in the next year. Like we're getting all the passport stuff ready and, and playing with some bands down there. But um, yeah, we're not taking everything we can get just because like from what we've known as like old dudes, like playing every random town on a Wednesday night, is, it's a little bit tough sometimes. Jordan, Jordan from the Northern has also said something similar when we were interviewing them. They, they really said that, like, the states kind of have a bit of more appreciation for metalcore. Um, so there's just, there's, maybe it's just because there's so much going on in the states that there's kind of audiences for everyone out there, whereas Ontario right now seems to be highly focused on hardcore, which isn't a bad thing. We're not trying to knock that down a bit, but, like, um, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Like it, it's here and there that you have to do do your thing, uh, especially uh, you get you gotta know your place and and where to do it. So it's the states that's that's somewhere that you guys have played before, or is that something played there yet? Um, we have a, we're like, you know, our bass player is like a very social dude, so he's got lots of friends with lots of bands in the U.S. and um, we're just it's just kind of one of those places that we want to try to get down to. Like we've had some some couple of show offers and it just seems more appealing. Like, especially when we've played the 401 route as in our other bands or just even in dead days, like you can only go so far up and down to like, you, know, you go to Quebec, you go to Montreal. That's great. But even then, like it's weird that a, a band like us is like, we're so far into like the metalcore range where like the catchy chorus is like, it, it almost doesn't, not that it doesn't appeal to a lot of people around here, but it's just, almost different now which is really weird because like back in the day like post hardcore was a huge thing you get lots of sing catchy choruses and mm -hmm. you know, lots of the screaming wasn't as big a thing nobody was making animal noises um so it was just a different <laughs> a different kind of world i guess but now like like that the heavy like hardcore like it, that is a huge thing and i love that but like because back then it was kind of the opposite like the you know hardcore bands were playing the small venues and the post hardcore stuff was up in the the big venues packing two three hundred people but nowadays it's literally just like flipped right over <laughs> so you, you you said you guys are kind of so focusing on a bit of this social media aspect because i mean you guys are like kind of like diving right into like the tiktok world is that something you guys are are, are into or like what's your guys relationship i suppose with that app I have one we use it but it's like we always feel like we're like 10 steps behind on that one <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's kind of a thing like trial and error, really. Like we went so long without using anything. Like we were band that came out and like all of us were just like, Oh, I don't want to do it. I don't want to deal with this stuff. And then, um, I think it was probably like last summer where we like, we got to start posting like regularly just so we can get 
people interested in our music. Like we had so many songs that nobody heard because we went with the old route of like, well, people will find it, but that's really not how it works anymore. <laughs> There's a thousand bands <laughs> added to Spotify every day. Yeah, yeah, and and actually, I think I said it in our last locals only with Tyler that like you've already mentioned MySpace, but like back in the day when when everybody was doing the MySpace thing, if you had a song on MySpace that was recorded, you were ten steps ahead of most of the local bands. Like promoters could hear you. This was something that like it was utilized as a tool, and now like Spotify is obviously is taken its place since. But like it's so interesting to see where the social media lies, and you're absolutely right. TikTok is a weird world to navigate. You have to do trends, you have to do things outside of your music, but still make it relatable to your music. It's this weird marriage of like I don't I don't want to say selling out because that's necessarily not the term I'm looking for. Back in the day, definitely was that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 100%. Um, but like you have to definitely do just a little bit more. And I believe it actually I can't I can't remember. I, I believe one of the members from the northern actually made a really cool status not too long ago about saying like you you know, your talent in your music that has to be the like bar of where you are as an artist now. That is the standard. You have to be good at your artist or like music. And then you have to bring them a little bit more. You have to give them a bit of a personality. You have to show them behind the scenes. And it's just, nowadays it does seem a little bit extra. And uh, navigating that social side, especially with, you know, an app like TikTok, can be definitely, you know, draining, hard to navigate. Because um, we're all just, at the end of the day, want to just play music and have fun. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, social media, weird thing to do, especially nowadays. But I'm glad to see that you guys are giving it the old college try because, listen, that's what we're doing here too. Absolutely. <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's just an add-on. It's like you got to be good at uh, video editing and coming up with ideas. Like I like the creativity in it. The older I get, it's like finding something to like latch on to and something to do. Like you can – like I have children and I love them and that's 75% of my day, but it's like, other than work, work at this point is just, you know, something you do to pay for your hobby hobbies, I guess. It's like, I never had many other than music. And it was always just like, this is what I wanted to do. I toured. It kind of got the best of me for a while. And then like having to deal with people that you weren't, that weren't fully invested the same way you were, that was always my biggest struggle. Um, but like with this band, when we started it, I remember reaching out to the guys and like, Hey, like, I don't know what you guys think, but if you want to start another band, it's like, we're giving it the college try. Like I, I want to do this. I want to do it well. Um, it's going to be expensive. Like we have to do it all. And if you don't want to do that and you don't want to show up to practice and you don't want to put the time in, you don't want to put the money in, then just leave now. Like I've, I've every band I've ever been in has kind of fallen apart because like one or two members are like, half in half out and I don't I'm not good at that like I'm all in like um it just I I it, simple thing of like I'm sober now I've been sober for like two and a half years I probably drank every day for like what since I was like 19 and uh it was always I either drank a lot or I didn't drink at all because I drive for a living so I was very much in the beginning but like I always have friends when they are like oh so you don't drink anymore I'm like no just something I stopped and they're like, Oh, like you, you have one or two. I'm like, that's the problem. I can't just go half in half out. I got like, it's like either I don't do it or I do it. So I just, I try to apply that to like anything. I don't want to like half ass stuff. Like to the point where like, if I start dabbling in something, if I'm not immediately into it, I'm like, nah, I'll just set it aside. Somebody else can figure that out. Especially with the band. Like we've got guys, everybody does a little bit of everything. And that's what, that's why I love, this project and these guys like it's guys that i've been friends with for years so it makes it that much easier and also there's no babying there's no like you know tiptoeing around people's feelings it's we've known each other so long where you can be like dude that's a terrible idea <laughs> like that guitar riff <laughs> terrible they go hey man those lyrics are terrible you should try something else but nobody gets offended it's like okay cool let's try it again and that's the best part. Well, what's your background with singing? Because, like, you, I think you're a fantastic singer. I think that chorus and uh, Rye, like, it's actually been stuck in my head for days. Um, where, where, is there something that you've grown up doing with music? Uh, is there an instrument you play outside of doing vocals? It's funny. Um, never really sang 
until the last like few songs we did um we've never we never really posted about it or made anything public about it but our original singer tyler uh who i started the band with he quit um a couple of years ago actually after our first show he decided it really wasn't for him he drove all the way from kitchener at the time like to london every week and it was a lot and totally understandable um so he kind of stepped away and then it was like oh i've never sang like i i sang when i was younger and then immediately transitioned to just screaming and i wanted to get really good at that mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh then i had to learn how to sing and that kind of came up real quick and that sucked because i i had nothing in me that wanted to sing was that uh, <laughs> was that in dead days that you yeah started yeah that was just in the last like year and a half that i learned see i find that i find that so interesting because when we first started listening to rot i was like i can feel it in my bones that this song is going to have the like metalcore chorus i know it's coming yeah. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. adam's there so i'm like well obviously adam's going to sing the hook and then you came in and we were both actually pretty surprised by that because yeah i thought it would be adam and then you started belting it instead yep yeah that's kind of most people's uh well i mean i've never and even like friends like when we were <laughs> We, the first one came out, Past Life, was a song we put out in um, August last year. And that was the first one. I'm like, okay, this is me singing the first time, and nobody's going to know that. Like, we didn't really tell anybody. Uh, <laughs> I was getting all these messages like, um, is that you singing that? I'm like, yeah. Very self-conscious about it, too. I, mostly nothing bugs me, especially when it comes to screaming. I've been screaming for years. Uh, I've kind of honed in on it and tried to make it better and you know, practice, practice, practice. But like with singing, I was like, oh God, this is terrible. Everyone's going to hate it. Because <laughs> everybody really enjoyed Ty's vocals and he was on the two EPs before that. So with us not saying anything and then me kind of popping out and doing that, people were like, oh, okay. Yeah, they're like, it's good. I was like, all right, nobody said I suck. So <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> and then, um, but the hard part is Ty sang a lot higher than I did. Mm -hmm. So that was like, oh shit, what am I going to do? Um, and, uh, I just tried and tried and would go into our jammer by myself and just play every song and just butcher it. Just terrible. <laughs> so I, uh, you know, I'm one of those guys that like, if I'm going to do something, like I said, I'm going to go all the way. So I went and, um, uh, I just, I just did whatever I could. I was singing every moment of the day I drive for a living. So I'd be dry. I'd be driving and singing the whole time. Um, and then actually about two and a half, three months ago, I decided to get singing lessons and it's awesome. I wish I was not such a stubborn jackass my entire life and did it sooner. <laughs> Cause like, it's like night and day. It feels so good. Um, singing was always that like singing is, can be tough when you do singing and screaming where, you know, depending on how you scream, if you throw your voice a certain way, singing can almost be impossible. Uh, but I figured it out. So it's good. It's been awesome. But yeah, no, I never really sang. Never wanted to. Never. I just wanted to be a, an angry young man the whole time. And now I have to be pretty every once in a while. Yeah, we've said it before on the channel. And like, there's something about doing clean vocals that is just so much more vulnerable, oh, especially yeah. if you're comfortable doing heavy and screaming vocals. I can totally relate. I'm starting to do a couple more singing with just like a project that I'm just kind of messing around with somebody here uh, just in the city. And like, yeah, I could totally understand how you feel. Uh, you just kind of just, it's a side that you're not necessarily ready to show the world or sometimes when you are you know it doesn't feel like you are i don't know if that even makes sense but yeah no super interesting um yeah let's talk about fatherhood uh so i also have a kid uh he is going to be turning 16 months in a couple of days you said you have a couple two yeah i got two little boys oh wow wow, wow. um and uh sorry how old are they I have a almost six year old and a three and a half year old. Oh, fun, fun, yeah. fun! Um, so, are they like at all familiar with like the music that you're creating, the music yep. that you play around them? Is there something that they have like a relationship with? Uh, is there stuff that they like? Do they like it? Do they hate it? It uh, it's funny because when they're both little, I played a lot of like any metal that I enjoyed that was on at the time. Like a lot of As I Lay Dying kind of came out during the pandemic when my little guy was like, I think he would have been like two <laughs> and <laughs> loved it. Just like the energy, like, you know, anything they get that has a groove and a bounce, like they can get into it and they'll click in. Um, and then once he got a little bit older, my, my, my five-year-old's just like, 
mm, put Crazy Frog on instead. Like, <laughs> valid choice. Valid choice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it, it kind of goes in between. Like they really enjoy, they like singing. Um, now they hear me because I do all my singing lessons like at home and I do them like over Zoom. And my son, like they, they'll hear me do the like, woo, all the practice notes. And then I'll come out and they're like, can we do it? Can we do it with you? Like, of course. <laughs> I mean, my family was never musical, listened to a lot of music, all country, but I just like, it'd be, it's kind of neat that I'm, he's going to kind of grow up around it. So I was hoping he would get into music um, and, you know, maybe one of these singing lessons or maybe piano. I was just such a stubborn little kid. I didn't want to do anything because if I wasn't good at it right away, I gave up on it. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, they love it. My little guy really loves heavy stuff. Um, the, anything they can like bob their head to, they're into it. So it's awesome. It's, it's, I love seeing it. and music videos. They'll, I'll throw them on. They'll ask to they play them um, and the choruses to our songs. They know them. It's pretty cool. <laughs> What's your favorite country stars? Oh God, now, um, now I don't know any of them, um, but like Tim McGraw was always my favorite because my dad had every album. Um, like Toby Keith, you know all those all those guys. Anything from like ten years ago. And back. Now I, couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you any of the guys now, but it's no. all I listen to it all, the names are kind of interchangeable. So <laughs> <laughs> kind of like, you know, metal core to most of us. We're like, you know, you listen to it, you like, you're like, okay. I can't remember what right. the guy's name was. What's the name right, of the right. I've heard this song. Yeah, and uh I don't know if you knew Tyler, our, our uh, co host here, he is also uh, a sober king as well. So we we'll, ah, we also celebrate you, that dude. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Phenomenal. I like it. <laughs> Were you just like driving around with like a liquid IV, like in the mornings, like fighting the hangover or whatever? Because I remember like by the time, by the end for me, like I, it was like pretty rough if I didn't drink. I was kind of a weird anomaly with it. I went, um, so I always drank like almost every day. Um, I, but I was like, I'm a very, uh, I, I had a, bad stuff happen to friends in high school. So mm -hmm. I had like a, a very like clean relationship with alcohol, but like, also in a very bad way, right, like just by right. myself, right? So would never drink and drive, obviously. It would always leave. Yeah, no, I want to make it clear that's not no, what no, I was no, trying I to apply. I framed my question very bizarrely. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I totally understand what you're saying. But I'm, like for me, like when I drive for like and I start at like I start at, like four in the morning for my job and usually work till like, you know, one, two in the afternoon. And then uh so I'd always plan my and that was one of the things that kind of bugged me. I would plan my drinking. Yeah. So you'd start whenever you get home. I I would never drink past like five thirty. But in that two and a half hours, God I could fit them in. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, and but before I had kids, I I didn't have anything to like really worry about. Um even when my little guy like my first little guy, my wife didn't work at the time, so I was just working. And I could come home and drink because we'd just be both hanging out. There'd always be one of us in good shape in case anything bad happens. And that just even thinking about the thought process, like, hey, what are you doing this weekend? Are you going anywhere today? No? Okay, so I can drink then? Like, it just, it ruins me to how my brain thought. But um, we had our second one and uh, we went on vacation together. And during pandemic, it was just like no holds barred because you couldn't go that was and a, do anything. Yeah, it right? felt that enabled. Was the biggest, Yes, it's like people but, were like, yo, it's cool. Go ahead. Yeah. I think yeah. a lot of people hit a rock bottom during yeah. that and like recovered from within yeah. that time period. Cause like it was that for me too. Like I just like, it was fully enabled for me. Like yeah. it was just like, yeah, get home. No reason not to get drunk at home. Why the fuck not? Yeah. yeah. There's a pandemic brother. Yeah. And like, I come from a family that like social drinking has always been a thing. There's it's a lot of like what you would call functioning alcoholics. I don't want my family to think mm. that it, that is how they are, but like, you know, we've always alcohol just in our. Uh, I think we all. We I think everybody yeah. knows someone like that in their life yeah. who has to have their all beers my after friends. Yeah. Yes, all my friends. Like you know, that's just and music. The music seems like that's what you do. Like you go and you mm -hmm. drink and you you're playing in bars. Like that's the whole world kind of revolves around it. Um, but yeah, I just came down to a point where like literally one day I was like, my wife's going back to work. I work during the day. She works at night, and I just had that like, oh, that's not going to work for me. Like I can't. I can't be drinking and having my kids at home, like with a baby. And, um, so there was my last night of drinking was, uh, we we're in Niagara Falls we're in a hotel room. She just had the baby. Everybody was asleep by eight. Like the room was black. And I'm just sitting on my phone, like staring into the abyss of Instagram and like, huh. And I looked at the tip beside me and I had like, I can't remember. It was like eight or nine empty cans by 11 o'clock, like three hours. I just, just drank everything I could. And I felt fine. 
and it blew my mind. I'm like, wow, that, uh, that's a lot. So maybe, maybe I'll talk about it with my wife the next day. So I was like, I think I'm going to quit drinking. She's mm-hmm. just like, why? He's like, you don't, it's not a problem. Like it doesn't affect your day to day life. Like you're not, I, I, I never got hung over. That was the other thing. I never, ever had to, like you said, like Lucky I, you. I never <laughs> had to, I was very I was good at it. I was a professional. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, that day I was like, yeah, I think I'm done. And then that was, I just, I started it like September 1st. It was like sometime in August, but September 1st is my, my start date is what I wrote nice. down as. And yeah, almost yeah, mine's around the same me. time. Yeah, I think mine was in like years. November or something since getting sober. Have mm-hmm. you felt more confident in performing live your, your writing abilities, um, just your vocal performances in general? Um, did you feel less confident going in at first and sort of grow into it or? Yeah, it was kind of weird. Like our, I believe in our first show, I get it. I think I was sober at the time. I can't remember now. It feels like forever ago, but, um, I, uh, would always drink something usually when I played, Mm -hmm. uh, just to kind of settle the nerves. Like, it's funny. I've played probably 300 shows in my life and like, it doesn't matter. Like you get that 10 minutes before and you're like, Oh, I got a nervous belly and, uh, I need to drink alcohol to calm my entire everything down. So I would always do that. Like whether it was a shot or a beer, um, never worried about my voice. Cause like, again, with screaming, it was, yeah, I'll figure it out, you know? Um, and then, uh, yeah, after I got sober, I just, like, there's just weird anxiety that sits in me all the time now. I was talking to my wife about that. I'm like, you know what? I never really cared about anything when I drank. It kind of numbed everything. I never thought about it just cause I've been doing it for so long, but, um, nothing really bugged me. I was never really an anxious guy. And then, uh, now when we, I mean, I feel pretty good now, but like the first few shows back when it was just like, just me, I was like, I was terrified. 100% terrified. <laughs> it's like, I'd never done it before. And I was going to step on stage and that it was like, everything goes blank. You're like, uh, have I done this before? <laughs> so yeah, it, it, it changed a little bit. It feels good now, but yeah, the first few shows back were like, this is a different world. Have your kids seen you play live? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. We've been, we've been kind of waiting. I, I want to take them both. Um, Cause the little one probably, I mean, he's like three. So we'll probably wait maybe next year. We'll get them to come out, but I'd like mm-hmm. to, as soon as I can have them come out to a, a, a decent show and throw their head, their earplugs in and let them see what happens. I was curious. The music video that we watched for rot looks fantastic. It looks so well shot. Uh, I mean, the the song is really well done. We were just wondering who shot that and how did you folks land? Like, how did, how did this all come about? Uh, great question. Um, I have a friend that runs um, like a media marketing. Uh, they shoot a lot of videos and like promo videos for people um, called Prevail uh, Media, Prevail Studios, Prevail Media. It's kind of like an offshoot of both. Um so he's a friend that I've met actually hell when I first moved to London, when I was like 18, um, he was kind of the guy that got me to record for the first time in my life too. I was always very nervous to do music and he liked my voice, wanted me to help him. He worked to, um, uh, whatever the the music class, the music program in London, um, MIA at, at Fanshawe. Nice. So I worked with him and then just over the years, we've just been pals and everything. He had a studio in his house. It's actually just right around the corner from mine. Um, and he's a videographer all of a sudden. I know he's a man of like every talent. Um, so he, I just reached out to him. He shot some of our live footage actually for um, our music video for our song called Death Song. That's all like live footage. And he's just got an eye. He's one of those guys that you just never know he's there and he's just, getting great angles and, and he just, he knows what he's doing. So after I saw that, I was like, man, have you ever done a music video before? And he's like, no, I've done lots of like marketing videos and like live videos, but never like storyboarded, like fully worked out videos. So uh, I'm like, well, like maybe we can figure something out. So between my mind, I'm usually like the creative guy when it comes to the ideas for the songs, uh, like the videos and like kind of what we're doing. Jeff is our guitar player, he's our editor and like, he does lots of, uh, after effects and he's like a whiz with videos. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. So we go, we've literally got like almost everything in our band, which is very, very helpful. Um, but, uh, yeah, Matt, my buddy, uh, Matt Sobey. So he filmed it all and 
we just kind of put it all together. It was just like, you know, like the horror vibe, like the purge mass style thing was the idea I came up with. And he kind of just, we sat in my kitchen and wrote everything down and filmed or uh, planned out all the shot listing and try to be as professional and you know, like concise as we could. And, and actually like the day <laughs> of, it was awesome. Like we just hit all the shots and it was great. But thank yeah, you, man. I, that that's really like amazing to hear that you that you like it. We were I very figured much like how's this? I go? figured you guys must have hired like like just like a professional like video editing team to do it. Like it just it looked really really good. The the editing in specific too, the very frantic uh, cut up shots and stuff, yeah. the purge mask shots. That one shot of like the guitarist with the mask is like that's yeah, like the it's like an iconic yeah it's like an iconic so shot. Yeah. It's really good actually. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, and, and again, the audio quality on that mix, too, um, with the producer you. you've been speaking about. Yeah, just absolutely, it, it bangs. It bangs, guys. You you said, um, just to get back to this quickly, I don't want to um, harp on anything like this too much longer, but you said you didn't really get hangovers. So when you uh, gave up drinking, did you find you didn't really have to deal with too many withdrawal symptoms either, or did you still feel like you got hit by some of those? Or was it more just like the disruptive feeling of not having it anymore? Uh, I think it was like, so I had about a, like maybe about a week and a half of like, I felt off. Like I felt, um, there was a weird moment of like, uh, like, I want to say clarity. It sounds dumb, but like, um, I felt everything. There was no, nothing like impairing all my receptors of life. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it opened me up a lot in like good ways and bad. Like I almost struggle with people like, I bet you felt great. Like, you know, I bet everything's so much better. Many things are better, but like, if you think what, to, like call it 20 years to, at 20 is when I started like drinking on a regular basis, like joined a band and every weekend you're gone and every weeknight you're drinking with friends. Um, until I was like 30, two you're yes. paid by the venue in drinks yeah <laughs> yeah that's still how it is it's the best i'm like oh great yeah. i'll just uh who needs more um yeah it was just like a weird clarity and now i find like I, I i don't usually have much for struggles of like mental health or like depression i've been very lucky that way but um i do find those bouts i feel everything a little bit heavier than i feel like i used to mm -hmm. um i feel less like a robot like if um it's, it, things bug me now, which is like I, I kind of a downfall, like, you know, overthinking. Um, sleeping was still good. I was actually afraid of my sleeping kind of getting thrown off. But um, no, it's been it's been good. Uh, about a week of just like, people, well, my wife's like, you know, you can't just stop, right? Like, you'll die. <laughs> I was like, well, I mean, I didn't depend on it. Like, I could go. Well, that's a lie. I went on. It was every day. I couldn't remember the last time I had like really stopped. I think I did like a three month bout when I was really, I, I got into like a huge fitness thing when the band thing stopped. So I went like, as soon as music stopped, working out started. So I did that for like those five years in between. And then when we kind of had kids, that kind of was tougher to do with my, with our like day to day life. So then I had more time to drink and not work out and keep myself healthy. So like I went, yeah, I went three months not doing it. And then that was fine. But uh, yeah, definitely. I, just, I fully just stopped. I didn't really wean myself off like you're supposed to, but yeah, one tough week of like, just, just felt like I was hung over honestly for a week mm -hmm. and then, uh, mm -hmm. was kind of fine after that. I never, I've never had the, uh, like the cravings, you know, I never really had that. It didn't really, I kind of was worried that was going to happen, but well, almost three years in feels good. Yeah, I remember when I was first coming out of it, I felt like it almost like a fragility for a few months. Yeah, I just felt I just felt like like sort of like weakened and like scared of things and like very docile. Nobody talked to me about this stuff. It's great. Um, you, you know what you can do? Uh, I, I not that I don't drink, but I definitely don't drink when I'm performing at all. So like, I definitely don't. So whenever I get the drink tickets, I actually ask if I can use them for Red Bulls. Yep. And 90% oh, of the cool. time, I'm like, yeah, like, yeah, I'll give you a Red Bull. And I'm like, all right, now we got some energy for the set. Like, yeah, yeah I know. It's a, uh, huge, huge, huge tip out there for people playing the bands and, uh, yeah, who get drink tickets and don't drink. Use them on energy drinks because uh, they're typically there at the bar. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, okay. You you have a – sorry, I have a 
an adorable cat that just wants to be loved right now. Um, <laughs> you have a you have a show coming up with uh, some friends of ours in Sone happening yes. at Camp Cataract, uh, which is super exciting. Uh, May tenth, uh, May tenth, Friday, May tenth, May tenth. Yes, throwing that out there, throwing Next that out Friday, there. Friday, yes. <laughs> um, so, what, what is your guys' relationship with uh, Sone? I, like, I, I see that, like, you know, we've kind of mentioned them here and there already uh, yeah. within this interview. Uh, what, what's it like? Have you guys played a show together? Is this your first one? Uh, I believe this is our, actually, this is our second show with them. And the last time we played with them was at Camp Cataract um, last, uh, last summer. So uh, Austin Sohn, it kind of started with uh, Dylan, their guitar player, and like, I guess, backup vocals. Um, he, he's kind of like, he was a fan of ours. Uh, he was a great dude that was always coming to our shows and always like chatting us up and he was a great guy. Um, so that kind of sparked into this getting to know him and he knew a guitar player that we had for a little while. Uh, and then he was like, Hey, I'm in a band. Like we're going to put some music out. So they did that and we were blown away. And, uh, Allie, their vocalist is phenomenal. Like her scream is, is completely badass and their music is heavy as hell and I love it. Um, <laughs> So when we finally met them in Niagara Falls last summer, um, Camp Cataract alone is just one of those, like, it's a little venue. It's like, you know, they have amazing food. The pizza's phenomenal. Um, it's kind of like, it was very homey. Like, you can play some venues, and I'm sh like, I'm sure you've been in bands. Like, some places are great. Some places are terrible. <laughs> and um, the only thing that really makes everything consistent is cool bands. And mm -hmm. Sone is one of the coolest bands. Um, I'm pretty picky with my people. I'm like, I'm social, but I'm very much like not everybody's friend. I just kind of, if I like you, I want to hang out with you. Um, but that band, like, and I mean, after like 20 years of playing music, bands that work their asses off is one of my favorite things. And Sone does that. So those guys play tons of shows. Um, they get their name out. They're like everybody's, favorite band that's what i love about them um dylan ali um they're the ones i talk to the most but they're a phenomenal people uh and then uh mike that actually puts the shows on at camp cataract is i believe dylan's dad i want to say that's true um so we got to know mike really well playing those shows and he is one of my favorite promoters worked with a lot of people um some people are really fun some people are really cold some people are sketchy uh, Mikey's like the best of everything. He's a great dude. Um, very friendly and like appreciates the fact that bands come and play, uh, it, music and being in a band is kind of one of those things where it's, it's, it's kind of taken for granted. I think like so much money and time goes into it. And then, you know, people, you know, you can get it for free essentially now, like you, your Spotify's and your stuff. So, um, it's kind of lost, but that's a dude that appreciates everything that comes his way. And, and he really appreciates the bands. So Sone is all incorporated in that. So that's how we became like really good friends with them. So, uh, yeah, that's it in a nutshell. That was a really long nutshell. You know what? I, I just realized I'm such a fucking airhead, guys. Dude, we've played a show together. We have? Yeah. What did we play? We played at Camp Cataract uh, with Sone uh, in, uh, I, play, I play in Center AD. Okay. That makes sense. I was say, you look familiar too. Yeah, that night, like there was there was quite a few bands. We we we've it was a night of good people. I really enjoyed that night. Um, you we've played shows with other like bands, and they don't even talk to you. We're social people. Like we like to play shows and meet everybody, right? So that's awesome. I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I you know I I don't really remember much that night. I just I remember showing up and kind of doing. I think that was actually one of our last shows. Sinner uh, was would have been that gig, but that was a super cool show because actually I remember. Uh, speaking of someone, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe you you, you can remember. But was that not their first show? I don't. Shit, I don't know. I don't I remember, been, but they haven't did... been playing for very very long. They put on a cool performance. Oh, they're they're very tight, and like I actually just caught them here in London. They did a little run um, a couple months ago, and they're awesome. Like it just when a band works hard. And like just playing a ton of shows is one of those things. Like that's how you get tight. They know what they're mm -hmm. doing, and like boring on stage is a, is a killer. Like you, if 
you know, no matter what, you got to be fun to watch. You got to look You're like an entertainer. You yes, that's the whole point. People pay a couple bucks. They want to, they don't want to see you stand in one spot doing nothing. Um, those guys do that. They kill it. I love that. So we've played a show and uh, I, I apologize for just tuning in now. Like, no, like, for I, whatever yeah, it's not on me either. <laughs> yeah. And also, I just, just to wrap that up too, yeah, Shout out Camp Cataract. I like the, I like that venue. It has a good vibe to it in general. Yeah. It's just a, absolutely. it's a good, it's a good little venue. The sort of sideways stage goes in is it can makes for makes for some wacky hardcore shows. Oh, I saw yeah. I saw I went to the Street Justice yeah. show there and it's an interesting angle to watch people throw their bodies into. So um <laughs> yeah, shout out Mikey, shout out Cam Cataract. While yeah. we're glossing up um Sone, what would you say, let's say five other bands in like uh I let's I would say the Ontario scene, but don't, feel free to not put yourself in a box there what are like five bands right now that you would suggest to people bands that i know personally or like bands in general you can approach it like jazz baby whatever <laughs> you're feeling five bands you five bands you want you would want on people's radar if it was up Ooh. to you uh i would have to say so of course um pro sector is a band oh. from like london here we uh, we're them. actually yeah. playing <laughs> with them on May 11th, on the Saturday, with Sone uh, and a band They just dropped an EP. Yes. And yes, we love Pathfinder did. on this show as well. well. There you go. There you go. Um, <laughs> so we have a show the next night, actually, in Hamilton at Vertigo Go on May 11th with Pro Sector, and they're also phenomenal people. Uh, they're a great band. Um, oh, Conversations. I don't know if you know Conversation. Um, mm -hmm. in Toronto. Yep, yep. Yep. Post hardcore boys. We've been we've known those guys yeah. since like my first band, Search for Satellites days. Um, great people. That's another one. Like just bands that are fun to hang out with are golden. Um, what is it? That's three. God, math. Oh, um, Beguiler. We like to do some Beguiler. They're pretty cool. Oh yeah. They're nice and heavy. They're like they're deathcore. And they're they're they put on a good show as well. Mm. Um. I know I'm going to slap myself as soon as I like get off here. I'm like, oh, this band, of course. Um, uh, who else have we played with that we really love? And, you know, like Teeth. Teeth, teeth. is a band. Oh, yeah. One yeah, of our first shows teeth. ever was with Teeth. You know, a band full of guys that I grew up listening to. And mm -hmm. uh, they're insane. Like, Blake is one of those guys where I'm like, God damn it, man. I can't do that. When, they, when you play, you're like, if I have to share a stage with that guy, I'm like, why am I even, what do I do? Why am I doing this? <laughs> like, he just, he's like, everything just gravitates towards them right so yeah i think teeth would be the other one those guys are great too love that love that <laughs> that's a solid list yeah so yeah let's get into some anecdotes so yeah let's get, jump into some you know funny stories that you have for maybe dead days or like a, a band from the past anything sort of like you know a funny venue that you've played a funny situation that you've been put into maybe a tour tip you have for the people uh anything of that sort any sort of entertaining story that you have uh from from your band days that definitely sticks out to you yeah for sure <clears throat> um i mean most of the crazy ones are from when i toured in horizons just because that was like legit touring and being home away for a long time and going i think a max of i think it was about two weeks without a shower which was phenomenal <laughs> um a tour trip would be baby wipes uh even if you oh, don't wow. have kids <laughs> baby wipes are a life saver yeah um and a toothbrush that's about it you gotta talk <laughs> don't smell that's, that's about good. um my my go-to story usually is just like uh i mean when i was in a band called searching for satellites um we were like hometown heroes in london here uh we kind of got thrown out a lot of crazy shows for the time. Um, we were always that like go-to band because we were those people that, hey, somebody couldn't make it across the border. Like, I know it's the show's in three and a half hours, but do you want to play it? And we're like, ah, uh, guys, do it. You're like, and we're on the show. Um, so we played a sold-out show actually with, um, uh, oh my god, what are they? What's the really big Australian? metalcore band oh my, parkway drive oh my god nice. that is um, a very big australian right <laughs> yeah metalcore so band. that was probably like 2010 and that was the first i think that's the only time my parents ever saw me play i was like hey we're gonna be playing a show you know just want to validate the fact that i've threw my life away to play music you should come watch it <laughs> like, <laughs> so we played with them and that was sold out and it was phenomenal and huge and like mind-blowing and then my I, the best part is my mom was like so does this happen every time you play a show i'm like no <laughs> nobody no. cares <laughs> i don't know what i wish it was because then i could pay my bills doing this but um 
Yeah, that was good. And then uh, Horizons, my favorite was um, we were supposed to play this thing called Fest Evil that they used to have out of Six Flags. So we were on tour with, um, I think at the time it was My Ticket Home. I don't know if you remember those guys back in the day. And yeah. a band called Palisades. Uh, so we were on a tour with them and we get to this festival. It's very, very like well thought out and very like intense so like the small bands played a stage on one side of the vet, of park. It was like a huge theme park. One side, uh, all the big bands played on the other side. The big bands were like at the time falling in reverse. Um, uh, what do you call it? Um, like I see stars. <clears throat> uh, just like anything that was big. Enough. We came as Romans. It was just a huge, mm-hmm. all the bands at the time. So we played, a, we were supposed to play a small venue on the other side. Uh, it being a theme park and full of kids. They're very much like, okay, here's the rules, guys. Don't swear. If you swear, you're cut. We pull the plug, it's game over. And we just traveled like six hours out of our way to get to this place. So we brought our gear in. We're loading up. We're getting good to go. We got, uh, I think we were supposed to like close out that side of the venue. Um, So we had one more band playing before. So we had all of our stuff sitting there ready to go. And of course, you know, this dude gets up and it just... Fudge, 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 swearing like every other word. And we're just like, oh no. And then you, you can literally, I feel like you could hear it like in a movie, like, Ooh, all the power was gone. <laughs> and we're like, oh God, so what's happening? You know, the guy comes out and he goes, hey, you guys might as well pack your stuff up because nobody's playing. We're like, um, <laughs> pardon? Like, how? he's like, we're not paying you. You're not playing, we're not paying you. We're like, cool. You know, we get paid like 75 bucks a night, right? Like, <laughs> we, we spent every dime we have to get here. Mm-hmm. Um, so our manager for Horizons was actually the guitar player for Icy Stars. So we were like, hey, um, so this is what happened. We're not able to play. Uh, is there anything you can do to like maybe tell them to turn the lights back on so we can figure this out? <laughs> and he was like, I'll call you back in five minutes. So he called the guy who put the show on and pleaded to let us play. And the guy was like, no, we're not turning the stage back on. But... Hey, if you really want to do it, you can give them a bit of your time, your set time on the main stage. And we were like, oh, no, like, we don't want to do that. We don't want to be those guys. We're all very, like, nice Canadian kids. Um, sure enough, the, our, our manager was like, yeah, dude, come over here. Just bring your guitars. You can use all of our gear. You can play two songs out of our set and then get the hell off stage. Like, he's like, you got no time. Just go play, leave. Cool. So we get over there, and we're, like, standing amongst all the biggest bands at the time, and we're like terrified kids in the corner like don't don't go over there i don't want to talk to these people and it was awesome mind-blowing um it was in the middle of it it was like like the you know closer to the end of the show but it was like we get up on the stage pull our stuff up and it's just a sea of people like i've never played in front of more than like you know even that that parkway show was probably like at the time the cap was probably like 900 people which is great but this was like i want to say 2500 to 3000 people this big outdoor stadium and you just feel like a like an ant when you're up there you're like okay and you get up hey guys we're horizons from toronto canada you know everybody's so confused <laughs> they're just okay and then we played two songs and and like the craziest thing was that they knew the words like horizon Ooh. was kind of picking up at that time yeah. and uh it was it was like the best moment of my life i mean other than my <laughs> kids and like getting married but it was <clears throat> top notch one of my top five and uh got off stage and just felt insane and uh we had all these bands like coming like guys great show like what's the name of it? it's cool so that was that's like my it wasn't funny it was it was cool um but there's actually like a video of it online which is pretty crazy so I, i'll go back when i feel really sad and watch that and be like that was cool one time yeah do, do now looking back in a moment like that do you do you wish that you maybe talked to some of those like big people that were standing near beside just before you went on stage uh, or is that just like something that you know you don't really think about yeah you know what i've always been that like overthinker of those situations of like they don't want me to talk to them they're back here in their green room area. Like these are other bands that they know. Like they don't want the dude being like, Hey, I snuck back here. Cause that's exactly what it looked like. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, we got lucky. Like when we played the tour with like ice nine and, uh, like plot and you mind you, they're a quarter of, of like what they are now at that time. Like all those bands are massive. Um, but like getting to know those guys is great. It, it, 
it's one thing when you're, you know, just playing a random show with them. But when you've been on tour with them, you usually don't say anything to them for the first week being like, I don't want to be that weird opening band. Um, <laughs> and then you get to know them. And like, that's what I love that I was smart enough to like, you know, these are, they're just dudes. They're just people. I'm not a fanboy, to be honest. Like that kind of stuff doesn't really, it's awesome. And I'll say in the back of my mind, like, don't look like an idiot. But, um, but even JD is there, was a guitar player for Ice Nine and now he's our producer. I'm glad mm-hmm. I talked to him. He, I just, the knowledge, the dude is just packed full of knowledge and very nice and very humble. And, um, and he just ended up being the guy that I talked to all the time, him and Spencer, the, the vocalist. Uh, but JD's just kind of like now he's like that, one of my, my main buddies, I love him to death. And he, he genuinely enjoys our band. You know, sometimes there's, it's just transactional when it comes to producers. Um, but it was one of those things. I'm like, what do you think? Like, if you don't think we can do anything with this, like, I don't want to waste your time. And he was mm-hmm. very much like, no, there's lots of potential here. You guys don't know how to write a song, but uh, I can teach you. <laughs> so <laughs> that was, that's good. So, but, you know, lots of good come out of it, man. Those are those moments where um, I learned a lot and like how to carry yourself is a big thing. And um, really taking in those moments because they don't happen all the time. But yeah, no, that was cool. That's one of my big treasured moments in life. That's super cool that, you know, like, I mean, Ice Nine Kills, I think... I think they just did or are about to do a bunch of shows with Metallica. Like that oh, they, yeah. yeah. So like, you know, could shout out to Ice Nine Kills. They've got a crazy theatric setup. Like well, when it's you amazing. see them live. Um, yeah. So we, we obviously, we love that. Um, so from your tour days, uh, I've always got, I, I got a constant question that I got on here. What is your go-to gas station snack? Ooh. Hmm. Like any candy, really. I'm a big, uh, like, energy drink, sadly, that'd probably be what kills me. But that, um, I really like, the, like, my wife got me into, like, the, the random gummy cups. Mm-hmm, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, the cup of assorted, like, oh, oh, gummy yeah. candies. You know what I mean? Like, they're overpriced by, like, you know, five bucks. But <laughs> I just, I, I like a little variety. That's usually, like, I, I got a sweet tooth. It's real bad. So when I stopped there... drinking, I replaced it with sugar and i got the same thing i developed yeah, a right? sweet tooth i never i never had one before yeah yep. i never really cared and now like i like i'm constantly fighting my inner self to not just be inhaling sugar oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> um is there anything from the state specifically that you miss in general the shows are honestly like it was funny because when we left for tour i didn't i had didn't know anything about horizons it was like, I just met these guys. We practiced one time. Um, I had to learn all the vocals. And I was like, this is going to be a disaster. <laughs> and uh, I knew the bands we were playing with. Like, the biggest point was like, oh, cool. I get to meet some bands that I really enjoy. Like, I knew Palisades because they were Rise Records bands. I, yeah. I knew my ticket home. They were Rise Records band. It's like, if not, you know, hey, maybe it sucks. Maybe I'm terrible. But I get to meet some people and, and like, do what I've always wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Um, that was cool. Uh, but, yeah, the shows were just better. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's like maybe the style that Dead Days is, but like all of our listeners are all like mostly U.S. Um, a lot of the fans we have are U.S. that reach out to us and talk to us and ask about everything. Um, it's just different. I mean, Canada has always been kind of tough because like different genres pop off at different times, but like mm-hmm. metalcore has always kind of been a main subject down there like you think about the amount of producers and like songwriters and people to work with compared to here right like how many do you know that are like like a name brand producer that are like working with all you know label bands we don't have a lot of those we had sam (laughs) guyana but he moved to la so (laughs) (laughs) uh yeah no that's wild it, it, it's insane how that uh how that came together and how you managed it. So, so what was the farthest place that you traveled on that tour or maybe just in any tour oh uh, with the band i want to say how do you say it texarkana tex texarkana is that the, is that a place texarkana right it saying? doesn't uh, sound like a it place, was but it might be it doesn't <laughs> sound real <laughs> it was super far like south very very south where everybody drove around in like big suvs cowboy hats huge belt buckles very friendly which was like my boy does because we were trying to find a parking spot for the venue in this busy city 
and this very very nice gentleman in a massive like suv with like horns on the front and we're like oh god and like i mean this is my first time fully getting into america being like what's gonna happen here and we tried to we were saving the spot we had a, one of our guys standing there so i wheeled up at the vehicle and i got out i'm like oh dude were you waiting for this spot and he's like no i was just holding back so nobody took it for you I was like god damn it they don't even do that in toronto <laughs> they'll kill you for a spot in toronto um yeah that was that was probably the farthest that was a long long way down that was when did we, did we go to i think the tour started in ohio so horizons did a bunch of like like solo shows on the way down and that was one that kind of blew our mind actually we drove all the way down there it was the last one before we met up with the tour package just to make a couple bucks and we headlined and i was like this is gonna suck and it was crazy there was like 250 kids they knew all the words like it was just it's it's to me it was just such a mind-blowing thing like we're from toronto a bunch of kids and how do you know who we are and like their youtube videos are like one of those you know viral moments for those guys like back then you know, they put a video out and they had like almost 500,000 views within the first little while. And like, mm -hmm. you know, that's over 10 years ago. And I was like, oh, this guy's are legit. But that, it just travels. It translates really well in the U.S. So, um, yeah, that was, that was insane. Like, I'm up there, like, I don't even know the words. How do you know the words? <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have a, a favorite, like pastime in the van like for example like um when, when, when i'm with the guys and i'm doing a, a tour uh especially when i'm out east uh i take some time and i try to find a moose first time you know you just gotta find a moose just oh there's a moose uh, or if it's not like, depending on where you are uh see how many uh truckers you could get to honk your horn you know those oh, classic games like that is there any things that you do you know watch Netflix, listen to music. What is, what do you do to pass the time in the van while you guys are on tour? Or are you the one driving? Uh, it used to be me. I used to be the driver for almost everything. Um, mm -hmm. Wayne, Makes our sense. bass player. Yeah. Right. Wayne, our bass player is also sober. And he always kind of has been. Um, he usually drives. He likes, he likes it. Um, but usually our pastime, I remember like, back in the day like there was we didn't really have like can use our phones really um it was a lot of like shooting the shit like because especially with horizons like they were all kids like they were 20 21 maybe and i was like 23 at the time so i had a couple years and i played and toured for like all this time before so it was just like kind of getting to know them most of that time uh now uh we do a lot of like throwback music listen like the drive home, like we all kind of hang out and like, because we all have like full-time jobs and lives and we don't get to be social all the time. <laughs> we usually just like shoot the shit and like spend that time hanging out. And because we've known each other for so long as well, like that's, it's even better. We make fun of each other and we listen to anything under the sun. You'd be like, Oh my God, what's this song? Throw that song on. And then we all sing along and then we put the next one. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Good, I like nice, that. nice. It sounds like a camaraderie and so like a family, just like any band needs to be, yeah, right? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, folks, I think we can sort of wrap this up here. Uh, make sure everyone is checking out Dead Days. They have a brand new music video out called Rot. It is super dope. Definitely check that out. And they have a show coming up at Camp Cataract May 10th with the homies in Sone. Uh, we absolutely love that. Um, is there anything else that you want to plug? We'll roll out the red carpet for you. Is there anything you want to give a shout outs to? Bands, any sort of anything that the, the, the floor is yours. This is this is your time to shine. The biggest thing is check out the new song. Um, we put a lot of time in it. Uh, we... I think that song we finally finished like May last year or even, even before that it's, you know, we spend a lot of time on our songs. Um, you know, we spend hours and hours and hours. We get a studio at home. We work on them and then we take them to our producer JD and we hang out with him and we, you know, make them big and make them beautiful. And he helps with choruses. And he, like it's, it's, a lot of time goes into it. So if you could take a second to listen to rot or death song, past life, tire, any of our old songs, uh, we would love that. Um, thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. It's great to uh, essentially meet you guys. Uh, very nice. <laughs> yeah, dudes. Yeah. I appreciate the time. 
uh check out Sone. check out any local band that's around even if you've never heard of them click on something play a song uh just it's tough right now for bands there's so many and there's so many good bands it's not a bad thing it's just oversaturation kind of kills everybody so if you find something that you like buy merch online go to a show hang out get to know them uh do whatever you can and we appreciate it Mm -hmm. Yeah, just to piggyback off what you were saying, uh, go to a show. Everybody just go to a show. It doesn't matter if you've heard the band before. It doesn't matter if you've checked them out before. Shows aren't very much, and a little bit goes a long way, especially when bands are on tour, like some of the bands we've been talking about here. So, uh, yeah, no, just if you want to support something, if you want to do something, check something out. Make sure your city is having A show put a show on if if they're not putting on shows start a band for goodness sake you know this is what we're here for um yeah thank you don this has been a, a great time uh we really appreciate you uh sitting down and uh, chat with us so yeah make sure you are checking dead days out uh, it's on may 10th camp cataract with so and who else is playing that gig stuck in neutral and us alike awesome so make sure you show up early Make some friends. If this is your first show, show, you know, walk up to Don. If you watch this episode, walk up to Don and say scuttlebutt. Do it. You know, you saw this. I'm oh <laughs> <laughs> kids, man. They say worse stuff. It's great. Scuttlebutt's normal. <laughs> Just a low key scuttlebutt in a show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you guys very much for the time. I appreciate it. Cool. All right, guys, that was our conversation with Dawn from Dead Days. Um, make sure you guys check out Dead Days. Their music slaps. They're that metalcore band that keeps things heavy most of the time. Uh, check out Sone. Check out their show, May 10th. If you're seeing this before May 10th and you don't go to Camp Cataract, that was me to you. Um Thank you so much for watching this till the end. If you're hearing me speak right now, that means you're one of the sweet little people who watches our videos till the end. And that's very kind of you. Leave a like on this video. It really helps us out. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. We have a join button. That join button gives you the, the tremendous ability to give us two whole dollars, two of them. We will each take one of your dollars and we will use it to keep our lives going. So uh, feel free to do that or don't. I'm not your boss. We also have a lander affiliation code. So if you want to save some money on music and mastering stuff, you can go down there and use our discount code and then you'll have lander stuff and you'll have used our discount code. That's the chain of events that you would transpire if you were to do that. Um, thank you. I just saw what you were doing. Thank you very much for watching us, guys. We love you. We appreciate you. Shout out Dead Days. Shout out Don. Shout out you. Scuttlebutt. <laughs>